Hey there, product launchers. Happy to have you on another Office Hours. Today's Office Hours are going to feature Rich Goldstein, our IP expert on how to patent and small business IP. So let's hear from Rich. Hi, Rich Goldstein here. And thank you for joining us because we're about to tackle what may be one of the most important questions to people that are launching a product. And that question is, should I patent it now, later, or maybe never? And the reason this is one of the most important questions is because it's typically the one that nags at you throughout the product launch cycle, where you're saying to yourself, well, I, I think a patent's important and, and I should do it, or people are telling you that it's important. And so even though you're, you're going about other things in terms of developing the product, there is this nagging feeling of, well, should I be doing something about the patent? Or maybe I can do that later. Or maybe it's not important at all. But in any case, this is perhaps one of the most critical questions for you to look at and answer. And, and whatever that answer may be, whether you decide that you're never going to do a patent, having the answer itself is just incredibly valuable. So let me, um, let me share my slides with you and we'll get right to it. Okay, so this is the topic. Should I patent it now, later, or never? And let me just tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Rich Goldstein, and I'm a patent attorney. I founded an IP law boutique known as Goldstein Patent Law about 25 years ago, close to that. And during that time, I've obtained close to 2,000 patents for my clients. And I've also spoken to many other inventors in a lot of different contexts more than 10,000 inventors and giving them advice about what to do, or whether to do anything. And I also authored a book known as the ABA Consumer Guide to Obtaining a Patent. And that was from the American Bar Association who asked me to write this book to explain to everyday people and entrepreneurs how the patent system works. Uh, and one other thing that I've done which has been to help entrepreneurs and out of my passion for educating entrepreneurs is I I've uh, produced videos that tens of thousands of people have watched to learn the patent process. And uh, you can find them at patentvideos.com. Um, and at some later point, you'll also be able to find them here on this website, Product Launch Hazards. So now the question is, why do we tackle this, this question? Why is this such an important question to look at? And uh, what I would say is that it's because it's where all your other questions lead. All of your other questions about patent are really leading towards how much attention should I be paying to patenting? And when should I pay this attention? And most likely, if you're like everyone else who does this, you'll go back and forth between the notion that doing a patent is critically important and maybe that doing a patent isn't important at all. And, and so because of that, you will, uh, you'll ask other questions such as, is someone going to steal it? Uh, and, and what if it's successful? Won't bigger companies uh, or won't companies that are bigger than mine want to copy it? And, um, but then again, but what if I don't have the money to fight over the patent in court? So you'll also say, hey, if I, if I did get a patent, is it really going to protect my product? Or could someone just change it a little bit and get around my patent? And you might also ask, is a patent going to help me be successful? I mean, a lot of times people put a lot of weight behind the patent itself, and they wonder if it's the patent itself that's going to lead to their success. And on the other hand, they might wonder, hey, maybe I could be successful without ever getting a patent. So I think a lot of these questions have to do with the worth of the patent itself. Um, but they also boil it down to one critical question, which is, can I even patent it? Can I even get a patent on this? Because regardless of how valuable you might feel a patent would be to your project, to the success of your, um, of your product, if you can't get a patent on it, there's really not much point in, in going much further. So, so let's take a look at that. And, and in that, I think there's another question which comes up often, in terms of the costliness of the process. And people ask, what's the costliest part of patents? And my answer is, the, co the costliest part of the patent process for you 
may just be your misinformation about the patent process. The things you don't understand about patents, they can lead you to spend money unnecessarily. They could also lead you to skipping a patent when the patent might be incredibly valuable to you and your project. So first of all, in terms of this question, patentability, can you get a patent? There are really two major areas to look at. One is, does the invention have patentable subject matter? In other words, is it the right type of thing that can be patented? And the other question is, is it new enough? In other words, is it new and non-obvious? To get a patent, your invention must not only be new, in other words, different from things that exist in some minor way, but also non-obvious. And that is in whatever way it is different from things that have been patented, from things that exist previously, whatever that difference is, it must be a non-obvious difference. It must be something more than just something that would be obvious to people in the field. And there are two main, there are two main types of patents that you might be interested in if you are patenting a product or you're looking to patent a product. One is a utility patent. And a utility patent is the one which protects the concept. It's what protects the functional differences in the product. So on a conceptual level, what's different about your product and uh, like what's different about the way it's structured that lead to some functional differences or functional advantages in your product. And beyond the, the utility patent, there's also a design patent. A design patent is simply for the ornamental appearance of the product. So you have a functional product and it has an appearance to it, uh, which is ornamental. It's not about the function, it's just about um, a interesting ornamental look for that product. That's what you would protect with a design patent. So in terms of deciding whether you have something that's patentable, you also wanna know whether it's something that you can get a utility patent on because there are some structural differences that are worthy of a patent because they are new and non-obvious, and whether it's something that could ultimately, or maybe at the same time, qualify for a design patent because you have a different configuration or appearance of a, of a known product or a known functional product. In terms of the patent process, just a few things to know that generally uh, the patent process starts with preparing and filing a patent application. And a patent application includes drawings and description that really go into full detail of the invention. And, uh, and uh, if you've ever seen a patent before, basically all that information that you see in that patent, all the drawings, all the description was originally done by the patent attorney when they prepared and filed the patent application. And eventually once the application was approved, that became printed in the actual patent. So most of the work in the patent process is in preparing and filing a patent application. And once the application is filed, then it's patent pending. And once it's patent pending, the, um, well, first of all, your priority is established. So if anyone were to get to the patent office with their patent application after you, then you would have priority over them. So patent pending status means you filed, means you have priority. But then at a certain point later, it's going to be reviewed by someone at the patent office, someone known as an examiner. And that examiner is going to do an examination to determine whether your patent application is worthy of a patent. That examination means they're going to do their own research to see what exists that's similar to it and decide whether it's different enough to be worthy of a patent. If they disagree, then it may be rejected. Uh, but when it's rejected, we have an opportunity to respond and present arguments to show that it should be patentable. Uh, and once we respond, if we convince the patent examiner to approve it, then they allow it. They issue what's known as a notice of allowance, at which point certain issuance fees need to be paid to the government. And once those fees are paid, then the, the patent is granted. Then you have a, an issued United States patent. So that's the patent process. Um, and uh, a useful step to help determine whether what you have is different enough to be worthy of a patent is to do some searching. So you do some patent searching to, to look for prior art, for look for the things that existed prior to your 
invention. And doing that research will help you avoid jumping into the patent process when it's not possible to get a patent. Uh, and then again, um, you can start that research by, do, by um, using some online searching like Google Patents. And Google Patents will let you do some online research and help you eliminate the possibility of a patent. So in other words, you do some, some quick searching, you look on Google Patents, you find that the exact same thing exists, that might be sufficient for you to just say, hey, uh, I'm never going to pursue this because it's not something that I can patent. And then that's the end of the story. But if you don't find something just like it, and you're still thinking that what you have might be patentable, then it pays to have a, a classification search done because it, it will cost a lot less money to do the classification search professionally than it would to have a patent application drafted. So if you find it easily by yourself online, then it pays to uh, just invest a little time to, to do that. But if it turns out that there, there is nothing similar that you're able to find, you still should have a professional search done prior to spending money on drafting the application. Uh, the other thing though about the, the research and having good research done is it's gonna help steer the process, help you define what you should be seeking in a patent. So you go into it thinking, I've invented this whole new concept, this whole new product. Then you do some research and you see that it's not as new as you think it is. But then you get a sense of what is new about your product. And now you know what to focus on with the patent application. You focus on the part that actually turns out to be new. So it can help steer the process when you have good patent research done. And um, so in sum then, the Getting, getting the right advice from a professional after you have the, the benefit of research can help you avoid wasting money by headed in the wrong direction. You could spend a lot of money drafting a patent application that's really mostly about something that's not patentable, and maybe then you're just trying to squeak out that remaining portion that, um, that you really didn't spend much time and effort on, but that's maybe the only part that's patentable. So. It's, it's helpful to, uh, to find that combination of good research and good advice to help you avoid wasting money. And that goes back to that question of what's the costliest part of the patent process? It's the things that you don't know. It's the things that you don't know about the patent process. And it's the things that you don't know about the patentability of your own invention that can be the biggest waste of time and money. So then now let's return to that question. With, with that background and knowing a little bit about kind of what would uh, determine the question of can I get a patent on it, let's go to that bigger question of should I apply for a patent now, later, or never? So never. So first of all, when do we rule it out? The time that we rule it out is first of all when it's not patentable. Uh, and uh, this may seem very obvious and very intuitive, but it isn't for a lot of people. A lot of times it's the urgency, the sense that I really need to get a patent that will overcome the notion that um, it's actually not patentable at all. It's not something that you could get a patent on. Um, and sometimes people spend a lot of money trying, even though it's staring them in the face, that, that they're never going to get a patent on it. And a related concept is you should not bother doing a patent at all uh, in the second scenario. So even if it is patentable, um, when what you would be patenting would not help any important business goal or personal goal, it's not worth it. So you might see a path toward getting a patent, but when you look at it, and when you look at your business goals, and when you look at the scope of the patent, and when I say the scope, I mean, well, what are you actually patenting? Are you patenting that original concept that you thought was new? Or are you now just relegating yourself to patenting some minor difference that might not be important in the marketplace? So you, uh, you notice that there is something patentable, but it's really just a little piece of it. And and when you think about your business goals and your goals of, of bringing the product out there into the world, you realize that like, true, this might be a nice little feature of your product that you're able to patent, 
but would it help you meet the business goal of preventing competition? So if you want to stop other people from doing anything like it, um, and if you're not actually able to protect enough of the invention, enough of the product to prevent your competition from jumping in, then it's not really going to help you with that important business goal. Um, and then there are also personal goals that might be benefited by getting a patent. Um, you're standing within your industry, perhaps. Uh, you're standing um, within your career, among your colleagues. Sometimes a patent would be beneficial. But if it's pretty clear that whatever you would be patenting is not going to help any of those goals, then don't even bother. It's not a matter of now. It's not a matter of later. It's more like never. So let's talk about now. So when should you apply for a patent on something now? First of all, you want to have something that's patentable. You want to have looked to see what else is out there that's similar and done the right research. And it's clear that you have something that's patentable now. The concept that you're trying to protect. The thing which you think is the groundbreaking part. That itself is patentable. So, uh, so you have something patentable and the patent will help you, achieve, help you achieve an important goal of your business. So you realize that, hey, this, these features are patentable. And if I patent these features, it will be really difficult for competition to jump in on it. Or um, these are the features that a, a company would be interested in licensing. Uh, when you have those together, then you are leaning towards now is the time. Um, also, if you're about to start selling it, you're about to make it public, or you have concerns that someone might beat you to it, would be a reason to do it now. I mean, sometimes you don't feel a whole lot of urgency because you're not about to start selling. You're not about to do anything public. You're, you're quietly developing it in the background. Um, but at the same time, though, you might have this feeling that, hey, there's a lot of people working on this problem. There's a decent chance that someone else, even having not heard of it from me, might file their own patent application. So then that might generate the urgency. And um, you know, at the same time though, you don't want to let that sense of urgency cause you to overlook the first two. So you might feel, hey, this is really important. A lot of people are working on this. I should be filing a patent application. But that urgency shouldn't have you overlook the fact that you have something patentable, or rather that you don't have something patentable. And it shouldn't have you look um, or shouldn't have you overlook the fact that the patent itself won't help you achieve an important goal for your business. So if, um, uh, you know, um, if you look at these together, and once again, to, to, to decide that now is the time, you want to first of all realize that it's patentable, um, realize that the patent will help you achieve an important goal for your business, and also that there is some sense of urgency where you're either going to start selling it or making it public soon, or you have concerns that someone might beat you to it, and those together are the main reason why you'd want to do it now. So in terms of later, um, sometimes it, it's okay to put it off to later. One of the reasons would be it's not ready to patent. When I say it's not ready to patent, uh, it may be because like, there is some grain of patentability in it, uh, but the third one here, the concept and details might change dramatically in the near future. So you've realized that, um, that the main concept is not patentable, uh, and you have some details which themselves might be patent patentable, but you say, hey, I'm going to develop it further. I'm going to come up with more here. It's going to change quite a bit, so I'm not really ready. And at the same time, though, I'm not about to start selling it because there's a lot more development that needs to happen there. So if those are some of the factors, if, if that's the case where it, it's really not ready because you're changing it, there's not, a, there's not a big patentable concept in itself that's worth pursuing, 
uh, then it might pay to do it later. And um, um, another factor or another part too toward doing it later is if you're still not sure that you would, you would even pursue developing and launching the product. So if you're thinking that there's, um, you know, it's a good idea, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'll do some market research in private. That is not by putting the product out there, but, um, but kind of looking at trends and, um, you know, trying to decide whether this is something that's worthwhile at all, then you might want to put it off to later. Um, you know, if you're not totally sure that this is something you want to launch, then don't bother. Don't do the application. Uh, don't, pre don't prepare and file a patent application because it's, um, you know, there's a lot of money that's, that you'd be investing in the patent process. Wait until you know that, um, that you wouldn't even, um, wait, wait until you're sure that you're going to pursue developing and launching the product. Um, and I probably went around in circles on that quite a bit, but I think the whole point is you want to wait until you have, until your gut tells you, yes, this is something you're doing before you decide to, uh, to, to actually go ahead and do it. But now here's the problem with later. This is the biggest thing that you need to worry about. Uh, or maybe there's two things you need to worry about, but um, here's the first one is that selling your product or publicly disclosing it before you file a patent application could easily end your right to ever patent it. So if you put your product out on the market, if you publicly disclose it in certain critical ways, then you'll lose the right to patent it in the US and elsewhere in the world. And um, so just right off the bat, if you publicly disclose your invention, if you put it on sale, you'll, you'll immediately lose the right to patent it in much of the world. Uh, within the US, there is technically a grace period, um, a one year grace period, but there's certain conditions that have to be met to use that grace period. So under certain circumstances, if you publicly disclose your invention, if you put it on sale, you may have up to a year to apply for a patent and you may not, but right off the bat, if you, if it's longer than a year, then it's too late. And I see this all the time. I mean, this happens quite often where people will uh, have a product idea and maybe they're not quite sure if they want to sell it. They're not quite sure if it's going to sell and they say, well, let me just test it on the market first. I'll put it on the market and if things go well, then I'll apply for a patent. The problem is then they come to me maybe two years later and say, hey, we've got this great product. We want, to, we want to patent it because it's been selling so well. And I ask that question that I'm afraid of the answer, which is, well, how long have you been selling it? And they tell me two years. And I tell them that, well, I'd love to help you, but there's nothing we can do. It's essentially game over. Um, I mean, absolutely, if a year has gone by since you've publicly disclosed it, it's game over. Uh, and in many cases, if you've simply disclosed it before you've applied for a patent, then it's game over. So if, if it's going to be later, then you want to really consider whether you're ever going to want a patent. Um, and it, you know, once again, if, if it's going to, going to be publicly disclosed, then you have to be very careful about this. But there is one step that you can take when you're kind of leaning toward the later category, and that is when you're feeling that maybe you're not sure if you're going to um, really launch the product and you want to test the waters, or um, maybe this it's somewhat patentable, but you're probably going to develop better features for it, which themselves might be patentable, and that is you might do a provisional patent application. And a provisional patent application is good when you, um, when you have a, a sense that it's, there is something that you might want to patent here, but you're leaning toward later, right? Because a provisional patent application will get you patent pending. It will establish your priority toward getting a patent. Uh, it will stop the clock on those public disclosures so that if you then later publicly disclose it, you still can 
keep the right to file a patent application from this provisional. But you only keep that right as if you file a utility patent application within a year. So the provisional application gives you a year to file a utility patent application and keep priority. It gives you the ability to publicly disclose it, to talk to other people, and it gives you some time and space to develop the product further. Which, by the way, um, I should just note for a second, going back one slide here, the other problem with later that I didn't mention is just that someone could beat you to it. So um, forget the fact that you might lose out by your own public disclosure. You might also lose out because someone else filed a patent application before you do. So that's the other problem with later. And once again, filing a provisional patent application could help you overcome that because it could help you establish priority even over someone who files a utility patent uh, after you file your provisional application. So uh, that's, um, in general, that's the, um, that's the crux of the discussion of, of now, later, or never. Uh, and, uh, you know, at this point, if there are any questions, and if you're on this webinar live, uh, I invite you to ask, and, um, and let's see um, what else we can learn about this. Hey, Rich. Yes. Um, does public disclosure include, um, like, you know, if you were having financing or investor meetings, things like that? Okay, very good question. Okay, so this public enclosure, disclosure includes um, meetings with other people like investors, um, et cetera. So uh, the answer is, is it depends on the circumstances. Generally, one thing you want to do is have a non-disclosure agreement with those people that you're having those conversations with just to evidence the fact that it's a private disclosure, that it's not public. Um, and I would say, you know, in general, if the circumstances are that, that it's not public, it's something that happens behind closed doors, then um, it would probably not trigger those on sale bars or those those public disclosure bars that we're talking about but to be safe it really does pay to, to make sure that you have something that really evidences the fact and and proves the fact that it's not public at all that the people that you're disclosing it to in terms of those finance people those investors that they were on an obli under an obligation to keep it private and then in that case it, there's really no way that it can count as a public disclosure and uh, see, I have another question here that came in, which is, I plan to launch my product in six months. When should I hire a patent attorney? All right, so, so, he, so here the, the things that are at play are the fact that, okay, so it's not going to be public for about six months. Uh, but when should you start the process? So in an answer in that question, one of the things you need to consider is, first of all, there's a time frame or lead time that any patent attorney would need to prepare and file your patent application. And that could be several months. Um, so you want to account for that. And also, once you do hire someone, there may be some due diligence that you want to do, there's some investigation that you want to do in, in order to determine whether it's worth applying for a patent. So you need to add that in as well. Um, so, I would say if you're about to launch the product in six months, then the time is really now to do it. You, you wouldn't want to wait much longer than, than that before you uh, at least start the conversation with a patent attorney about the possibility of, of applying for a patent. So let me see anything else came in here. Here's a funny one. So I had this idea last night. Uh, do I need to patent it now? Okay. Well, I think this really goes right to that question of now, now, later, or never. So first of all, there's no reason to say never at this point. Um, it's going to be a matter of finding out um, you know, whether there's anything patentable about it. And uh, you know, also, if you just had the idea... Um, of course, there's some excitement in it. There's some excitement in the notion that, hey, this could be something really great. Um, but I think you ought to investigate it a little bit further um, to get to that point where you are sure that this is something that you want to pursue. 
you want to be sure that it's a product that you want to launch before you um, make the decision to apply for a patent. So I would say, um, I mean, it's good to be passionate about something, but you don't want to be impulsive. And if it's something that you just thought of, let it sit for a little bit and explore it a little bit privately to figure out if it's something that you're sure that you want to, to protect. There's a question in the chat, Rich. It says, you mentioned, can people steal it, is one of the decision makers, but often do people steal it? Aha, uh -huh. very good question. Um, well, uh, uh, it's a very interesting question for me to answer as a patent attorney, because you would think that, um, that it, would, it would pay for me to just feed into the paranoia, right? I mean, it would pay to have people be really concerned that everyone is out there to steal your invention. And I, I think though the truth is, and just what I've noticed throughout my career, is that most people aren't out to steal your invention. And even when you're dealing with, with uh, companies, a lot of times they're, they're not looking to steal invention, but they do want to know that you've dotted the I's and crossed the T's. So uh, initially when, when you're talking to a company and if they like the idea, probably most of them aren't out to steal your invention, but if they've seen you haven't done anything about patenting it or protecting it, they're not going to take you as seriously as if you have. So I don't know if it pays to be paranoid as if everyone is out to steal your invention, but it does pay and it does reward itself when you do things in the right way. Okay, seeing if I had others coming on my end here. Yeah, I, I, another question came in which was similar to what we were talking about before. I'm ready to start patent. I'm ready to start presenting my product to companies now. Do I need to, do I need to patent it now or can I wait until I have more set up in the pipeline? And so what I assume they mean by that is, you know, kind of like we were talking about before, that they were looking to, um, to get some traction with the patent, looking to get some traction with their product idea before they invest heavily into patenting it. And um, just, you know, once again, the thing to consider with that is a, is a matter of priority. So one thing that people um, enjoy or what makes people rest easily when they're talking to companies is knowing that if they have established their priority, if they have filed a patent application, then if they didn't count to one of those people that is, is out to steal their invention, the, and that person saw what a great idea it is and they said, hey, hey, this is really great. And they, they tell their attorneys, hey, we need to file a patent on this. Well, if you've already filed your application, you already have priority, then you could rest easy in knowing that there's no way that they'll ever sneak ahead of you in getting priority. So if you are ready to start publicly disclosing it, it really would be appropriate to get the patent application filed first. And you know, once again, uh, as I said, it, it doesn't pay to be paranoid about it, but it does pay to do things the right way. And the right way is to file a patent application before you publicly disclose it in any way. Oh, another question here is about um, a non-disclosure agreement, about an NDA. So um, the question is, um, if I have an NDA, is do I, if I have an NDA, do I need to file a patent application? All right, so here's the thing. So this is, this is what an NDA is all about. An NDA or non-disclosure agreement is basically a promise that someone has given you. It's a contract where someone is promising or a company is promising not to reveal your information, reveal the confidential information that you, you give to them to anyone else uh, and not to use it for their own benefit. So it's simply a promise, which means that the, the way that someone would violate a non-disclosure agreement is by breaking that promise. And if you wanted to sue someone over a non-disclosure agreement, what you need to do is prove that they broke the promise. You need to prove that they gave your information to someone which led to, let's say, a, 
a competing product being out there on the market. So imagine the scenario that you, you talk to a company with a, with a non-disclosure agreement, and then a year later, you see that someone else has put a similar product on the market. And you can't prove the connection to the company that you showed it to. Well, then there's nothing you can do about it. The only way you could prevail if you gave a non-disclosure agreement is if you could prove that they broke their promise and they revealed it. If you have a patent, on the other hand, it doesn't matter how that other product ended up on the market. They could have innocently invented it on their own. Uh, but if you have the patent, you still can stop them from making, using, or, or selling that patented invention. So in a very large sense, a, a patent is much more valuable than an NDA. Uh, it doesn't hurt to get an NDA from someone that you're talking with about your product. Um, and if you get an NDA signed, then um, it's just additional ammunition for you if there's a problem down the road. Uh, but it's really the patent application filing that gives you all the rights against people uh, that you, you can't prove um, were a party to it. In other words, it gives you rights against third parties. So that's really the, the, the helpful part of having a patent application filed. And uh, just another little bit of advice with regard to NDAs is once you do file a patent application, it's helpful to have an NDA. If you can get a company to sign an NDA, that's great. But I, I wouldn't um, lose the opportunity to show the product to a uh, potentially uh, valuable venture partner or a company willing to or um, able to license your invention uh, just over the fact that they're not willing to sign your NDA. So I would say, um, you know, once again, don't lose the deal over the, uh, over the NDA, but it's much better to have filed a patent application overall than to use an NDA in most circumstances. And I think that's all the questions I have. Um, and any over there on your end? Nope, that's all, we got them all. Great, well, um, this has been really fantastic. I mean, I really enjoyed doing this presentation for this, for this audience, for this group, and for your, um, for your site. And um, in the future, we're going to be doing office hour programs where we give people the opportunity to ask questions and to have those questions answered live uh, during the program. And so I invite your future questions and uh, thank you for joining us. And I guess we'll see you soon.